This is lesson 9-4, factoring to solve quadratic equations. Here's the steps to your solution for factoring. The first thing you want to do is get the equation into standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Next, factor appropriately. Factoring appropriately means you're using the method that will get you to factor completely. Next, split the factors up and set equals equal to zero. This is called the zero product property. Next, solve each equation for the variable. And finally, go back to your original equation to check. Let's do a guided example. x squared equals 6x. The first thing I need to do is get it into standard form. That involves me subtracting 6x from both sides. Now that I'm in standard form, I need to figure out what's my best way of factoring. Taking a look at x squared minus 6x, the best way to factor here is by GCF factoring. The GCF of x squared and negative 6x is an x. So I take an x out. I'm left with x minus 6 in parentheses. And that equals 0. That is now factored completely. Now I'm going to use the zero product property. The easy way to remember the zero product property is the three S's. Split, set, solve. I split the factors up. I set each of the factors equal to zero. So x equals zero. x minus six equals zero. And I solve each of my factors to get a value for x. This one is already done. x equals zero. This one I need to add six to both sides. and x equals 6. Then I should go back in and check my original equation. So 0 squared equals 6 times 0. 0 squared is 0. 6 times 0 is 0. It checks out. have to check both answers. So now I have 6 squared equals 6 times 6. 6 squared is 36. And 6 times 6 is 36. That works out. So my two answers in this equation are 0 and 6. Here's some examples for you to do. Pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to do the examples. On the left side, I need to subtract 100 from both sides. I get 4x squared minus 100 equals 0. Now I see a GCF of 4x squared and 100. I'm going to take out a 4, and I'm going to be left with x squared minus 25 inside the parentheses equals 0. I can factor further x squared minus 25 is the difference of two perfect squares. So now I have 4 times x minus 5 and x plus 5. Now I split all of my factors up. I have three factors here. Set them each equal to 0.
and solve. 4 equals 0 does not make sense at all, so this I am allowed to reject. This I need to add 5. And I get x equals 5. This I subtract 5. And I get x equal to negative 5. Right side. Add 15x. So now I have 3x squared. plus 15x equals 0. It's going to be a GCF factoring job. I'm going to take out a 3x. I'm left with x plus 5 equals 0. Split, set, and solve. So I divide by 3. x equals 0. And I subtract 5. x equals negative 5. Here's some more examples for you to do. Pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to do those. So this one on the left here, we're going to do basic trinomial factoring. Don't forget the equal zero at the end. A lot of students forget that equal zero. I'm going to put my x's in front and factors of 10 that add up to 11 or 10 and 1. So I have x plus 10, and x plus 1. I'm going to split it up. I split it up. I set them each, both equal to 0, and I'm going to solve. So minus 10 on both sides here. x equals negative 10, and minus 1 here, x equals negative 1. On the right side here, I have a greater than 1, so the best way to do this for me is the AC method. So AC here would be negative 160, and factors of negative 160, that add up to 27, negative 32, and positive 5. So now my next move is 4x squared minus 32x plus 5x minus 40 equals 0. Again, I'm using factoring by grouping for this one. So I'll draw my little imaginary line here. And I'll factor my left side here, which in this case is going to be 4x. And I'm left with x minus 8. And on the right side here, I'm going to factor out a 5. And I'm left with x minus 8, which is a good thing. I have a match in the parentheses. So now what I have here is 4x plus 5 times the quantity x minus 8 equals 0. And we will split, set,
and solve. And yes, we are going to get a fractional answer for one of these. It's okay to get fractions. 4x equals negative 5. Divide by 4. x equals negative 5 over 4. And then plus 8 on both sides here, x equals 8. And that's my two solutions for x in that equation. Let's take a look at what a word problem would look like here. So you're going to make a frame for an 11 by 17 rectangular photograph. You want the frame to have the same width all the way around. And the total area of the picture and the frame to be 315 square inches. What should the frame dimensions be? Now, the first thing you have to remember here is that length times width is equal to the area. And remember that in all rectangles, there are two lengths and two widths. Pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to see if you can figure it out. First things first, let x be the frame width. Now we have to set up an equation. We have 11 inches on one side and 17 inches on the other. So 11 inch length, 17 inch width. We're going to add the frame width, x, to each of the lengths and widths. So there's two of them, so 2x. So your equation is... 11 plus 2x times 17 plus 2x equals the 315. Then you'll multiply these two binomials to get 4x squared plus 56x plus 187 equals 315. Now I need to get this equation into standard form. So I'll subtract 315. from both sides. So now I have 4x squared plus 56x minus 128 equals 0. Now the next thing I'll do is I can see that there is a GCF of 4. So let's factor that out. I'm left with x squared plus 14x minus 32 equals 0. Now I need to find factors of negative 32 that add up to positive 14. put x here and x here and factors of negative 32 that add up to positive 14 are 16 and negative 2. Now I need to split set solve. Split all of them up. Set each equal to 0. and solve each of them. 4 equals 0 makes no sense, so we'll reject that. Here I'll subtract 16 from both sides, and I get x equal to negative 16. The problem here is, is that we're talking about frame width, meaning we're talking about inches of, presumably in a frame, wood. You can't have negative 16 inches of wood. Therefore, this is also a reject. 
because it's a negative number. On this, we'll add 2. x equals 2. That, because it's positive, is an acceptable answer. It's very important to know what, did, what answer would be acceptable and what wouldn't be. So, therefore, the frame dimensions should be, don't forget your 11 and 17, so we have to go back to these two things right here. Okay, so 11 plus 2 times 2 is 15, and 17 plus 4 is 21, so your dimensions should be 15 by 21, this frame should be 15 inches by 21 inches. You can check it by doing 15 times to 21, and you get 315 inches squared. So this is an acceptable answer. If you're having any issues with this particular lesson, please make sure you consult your teacher in class.